Hey guys, welcome to the review of the Techno Spark 5. So I've been using this phone uh, for a couple of days. Techno actually sent it earlier, uh, the, before its release, and I've had some time to hang out with it. And this is the full review. So first things first, uh, let's look at the unboxing. Uh, it's a similar experience. You get everything you get with normal Techno devices. So here's the video. So this is your usual Techno unboxing. The only difference this time is that Techno is going with a yellow and blue box. I wonder why Techno decided on a blue and yellow branding for the Spark 5. It looks cool anyway. So the phone is at the top uh, with Techno as usual showing the main spec it's pushing with this device. The same yellow and blue branding is here. Inside you get a free plastic uh, cover. The usual with a line at the center to let you read what's written at the back of the phone. A micro USB cable, the normal earphones from Techno, the 10 watt charger, and then let's look at the phone. After unboxing it, uh, the first thing I realized with this phone is that it looks almost exactly as the Techno Common 15. Techno is using the same design language uh, this year. Again, uh, it was the same design language with the Spark 3 and the Spark 2. So uh, it's almost like uh, Techno uh, wants to uni make it sort of a uniform design across all devices. Yes, it makes themselves devices better because somebody will look at this and look at the Common 15 and say, uh, it also looks good because the punch will display, the sort of rectangular camera setup at the back, uh, the arrangement at the bottom, the colors. So uh, somebody will look, it, look at it and say, 10,000, 18,000, I'll pick this one. Yeah, so the fact that they look the same to me is not a good thing, but I know to many people it's a good thing. So Techno is taking the decision to make devices look sort of the same because they want to sell more devices across board. So talks for them. But talking of that, remember Samsung is also using the same sort of design. So if you look at the S20 series and you look at the S71, A51, sort of the same design, A21 looks to also uh, borrow the same design language, which is almost this design language. So it works. So yeah. Before going further on design and all that, uh, this is a phone that has two gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage. Uh, it's using the same Helio A22 processor that was on the Spark 3 Pro. If you already have a Spark 4 and a Spark 3 Pro, uh, I think you can sort of uh, skip this one uh, if it is working well for you because the same processor, the same amount of RAM, uh, the same amount of storage. The biggest difference here is that there's now a 5,000 million battery and that's like a big bump. You know, uh, we are moving from 3,500 on the Spark 3 Pro, Pro 4,000 on the Spark 4 and 5,000 of the Spark 5, so that's a huge uh, difference. Okay, there's also a Spark 5 Air. The Spark 5 Air is the device I'm really looking forward to because it's seven inch display. This is a 6.6 .6 inch display. Let me just confirm that. Yes, this is a 6.6 .6 inch display. Now imagine a seven inch display. I really, I'm, I, I'm really looking forward to that device because that will be massive. It has the same 5,000 million battery according to the specs that we have currently. That's the Spark 5 Air. Same internal specs, same camera, same storage, uh, same charging, same battery, everything. But it's now a 7-inch display. I'm really looking forward to how it looks like. I'm really looking forward to testing it out and sort of hanging out with it and talking about it. I've always said uh, Techno's display, Infinix displays are quite good nowadays, uh, but uh, it's not like they will always take the lead because they have not changed the displays over time. So if you look at the display on the Nokia 2.3, uh, which you can watch here, the display on the Nokia 2.3 uh, is much better than this display. It feels, uh, it feels better in some way. So Techno needs to sort of change the displays they're using because uh, they've been sort of uh, outdated by now because the same display on the Spark 3 Pro, the same display on the Spark 4, I'm used to it. Yes, the colors are good, the brightness is good, but I want something full HD, something better, something different maybe. But maybe I'm only speaking because I've used all the devices. Somebody who will be picking this up for the first time may like it. It's not a bad display. 
ah, 5,000 million battery is really good. You can't go wrong with the uh, 5,000 million battery. And I'm glad uh, more companies are putting 5,000 million batteries to even the lowest, of, uh, lowest end of phones. Uh, the only problem with the 5,000 million battery is this, and you already know it, uh, slow charging. Tech hasn't included a fast charger here. You're only getting a 10-watt charger, and that's quite slow in 2020. So uh, you'll take quite a while to charge this phone. Before I speak about the cameras, I want to speak about a couple of things. So, for example, uh, the power button uh, has a different color. You'll notice that when you pick it up. So the power button, all the buttons are on the right side, but the power button has a distinguished color, so it's red. Uh, it's so first time Techno is doing this, which is quite good. Uh, it has this sort of symmetrical design up here. I don't know which Techno phone I last saw with it. It looks quite good. The punch hole display is on the left. Uh, that's an 8 megapixel camera. Uh, the selfies are okay selfies. Uh, the usual you'll expect with this device. So uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, missing on the highlights. So it blows out the highlights and sort of smoothes, uh, smoothens the uh, skin. But I'm sure that people like that. It's, it gets pretty bright even in low light. And there's also a flashlight at the front. If you love selfies with a flashlight, that's a good thing to have. Techno is never really clear about what the extra lenses do, and I don't really like that. I feel like uh, there should be an explanation on what the extra lenses are doing. There's four lenses on this phone. So the 13 megapixel main lens and three extra lenses. The thing that I don't understand is why the three extra lenses are there if they're not specified. Because if I open my camera, when I open my camera, I can get a macro lens, it's written here, super macro. I get the main one times X lens and I get a two X lens. But I can't get a wide angle lens. I don't know where that is. So what is the what are the three lenses behind you doing? I want to know that because I thought one of the lenses will be a wide angle lens. There's no wide angle lens. And that's the same story with the common 15, uh, the main common 15. There's no wide angle lens that I don't know what the extra lenses are doing. So if you're picking this phone, please don't pick it up because of the extra lenses because Techno needs to be clear on what the extra lenses are doing. If you pick up the Y7P from Huawei, you'll find that every lens is accounted for. When you're using a lens, the, the camera app shows you how to switch to the lens and tells you which lens is actually being used. And that's good. On the Techno camera, you, you can switch between the macro and the two times lens. And you're not even sure if the two times lens is an extra lens or it's just a artificial zoom using digital zoom. So I, I would really like to know what the extra lenses are doing. In terms of uh, the photo qualities you can expect from this phone, as usual, uh, very close up photos of flowers, of plants, of stuff look really good. Uh, the, there's a lot of detail, there's a lot of color, and the accuracy is not bad. The portrait photos are not quite good. Uh, they're the usual uh, techno portrait photos you expect. So. At the, high, at the edges of a person, there'll be blowouts and it will look quite weird, but it works for techno, so maybe uh, the people buying them will love them, but you can't complain at that budget price, at that budget point of a portrait photos. If you take uh, photos like uh, of landscapes of nature and all that, the photos look quite good. Yes, sometimes it overblows the sky, so you won't see details on clouds and all that, but if you're just taking uh, normal shots where you want to see the details and stuff that is on the ground, not like very amazing photos and all that, you can take such photos here. So you're not buying this phone expecting the best of photos, you're just buying it expecting clear, sharp, sometimes over sharpened photos, but they look good and they can work for every, uh, for the basic instances you need this photo, uh, you need a uh, photo for. So this is not a dedicated camera phone. So don't get it because you'll get the best of cameras or the best of selfies or the best of landscapes. They look good, yes, at this price point, but they're not the best. In terms of performance, I'm sure you already know where this is going. It's the same performance you got with the Spark 2, uh, the Spark 3 Pro with the Spark 4. It's the same performance you'll receive here. So same amount of RAM, same processor. The Helio A22 processor, like I said, with the Spark 3 Pro and the Spark 4, is a good processor. The problem is it's now dated. I wish Techno went to the newer processor. But I'm guessing maybe MediaTek hasn't updated a new low-end processor. So that's why they're going with this one. But I feel like there's processor uh, options that they could choose from and make it feel like a very new device, especially for people who love upgrading their phones year over year. 
So the new things here over the Spark 3 Pro and the Spark 4 are that it comes with Android 10 out of the box. Uh, it comes with a punch display, which is sort of fashionable right now. It has four lenses at the back, but only one lens is, looks to be the main lens that's working. There's extra LED flashlight, so if you want to take very bright photos, even in dark conditions, you can have the flash on. There's night mode, yes, but the night mode uh, isn't really good. There's an 8 megapixel selfie camera, looks to be the same from every other device. Uh, there's now 5000 million battery, which we've already talked about. So, and there's now a new design, new each design, and branding by Techno, the 310 design by Techno. So, is it a good phone? Yes, it is a good phone for the price point. I don't know the exact price, but I'm estimating the same price launch that launched with the Spark 4, so around 11,000 shillings. For that price point, this is a good phone. Remember, there's other options like the Xiaomi Redmi 9A, which is 9,999, so 10,000, with USB Type-C and 5,000 milliamp battery and uh, promise for updates and all that. If you prefer this phone uh, over the Xiaomi Redmi 9A because of the small bezels and the punctual display, I feel like you won't be going wrong because it's also a not it's not a bad phone anyway. So whichever decision you take, uh, this is a good phone. The other phones around this price point are also good phones. And yeah, whichever phone you choose, you'll be making a good decision. But remember, uh, Techno uh, is very lazy with updating their phones, so you'll probably stick with Android 10. Uh, other devices from other companies are probably updated much better, especially from Nokia and from Xiaomi. So make a decision while considering all these other options. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe.